What's up, y'all? Um, this is my video challenge for the self-perfected group on the importance of building a local community. Um, we just got some new dogs. They're part of our local community. So I'm making sure that they're uh, around me because one of them is a little puppy and she might run away. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, local community is so important, especially right now in the world um, where you see things like in Australia, for example, they have straight up um, like military out there um, ensuring people stay near their home. And that's insane. And I get it in the mainstream view. It's like, well, because people aren't following the rules and they got to stay home because of the virus and all that. But um, it's not about that. It's actually we're seeing really a giant PSYOP to see what are people, if you don't know what PSYOP means, at P-S-Y space O-P. Look it up. Um, watch the movie or watch the documentary called Psy War, P-S-Y-W-A-R. Um, and you'll get a little uh, glimpse into what has been done in the past and what's being done right now. Um, but I'm, I'm saying this because we need to act now to build local community, right? You got to establish relationships with your neighbors, um, with people in your city. I'm not saying like go into prep mode, like, oh, it's all going to fall apart and we got to prepare for doomsday. It's not that. It's looking at um, the state of the world and the fact that um, we need each other. We need community, and especially we need community united within principles. People that are actually working on themselves. Like, don't build a community of people that are just here to gossip or just do nothing with their lives. Like, build relationships with people who are actually making things happen, actually focused on creating real sustainable solutions. And I know those are buzzwords, so let me explain what sustainable solutions means. For example, um, my wife Jessica and I, we, um, we tutor local kids. Um, we have education uh, services where we can help kids really develop their understanding of the world and how to build businesses and work on projects and do things, you know, read any book at the library that they want to. That's a sustainable solution. Um, gardening. Here, you can see. Uh, this isn't a live stream, so I have to go like this. But see, look, there's a garden. Oh, there's the puppy, too. Her name's Lady. She's brand new. Um, but yeah, so we have all this food. That's a sustainable solution. Um, we're learning how to barter with our neighbors. So as we have more of our food coming in, we're trading with our neighbors who have um, various forms of, of um, food and apple trees and all sorts of stuff. So it's like, that's a sustainable solution. Um, also taking good care of yourself, drinking enough water, you know, having people around you that are uh, reminding you to eat healthy and all of that. Like that's also sustainable solutions. And that's the importance of community because um, as we saw last year when there was the whole scare with the pandemic and everyone rushed to the grocery stores, it was like, if you were in a place that's, let's say it's a food desert, um, meaning there's no food within a certain mile radius that's really grown, or there's kind of dead zones where you can't get quality food, um, that's a big problem. And mark my words, this is not going to be the last time there's a pandemic or a lockdown. Um, you're seeing it now. There's an article on CNN I read called, talking about climate lockdowns. And I, I get why they're doing this. It's because it sounds like they really care. Like, oh yeah, the climate is in a bad shape. We got to just lock down, stay home, stay safe. But if you just look logically at what's happening with this, it's more and more ways of keeping people basically content with being at home. This whole push towards work at home, right? Stay home, stay safe. That whole mentality, that's the opposite of, hey, build community and come together. And to someone who's completely afraid of the virus and totally um, accepting everything that the mainstream is saying, of course, you're going to say, no, if you gather, you're going to kill people like you're going to spread the virus and everything. But I'm going to encourage you to just actually talk to people, talk to people around you, see who who really knows people that are truly affected by this virus. Like I have yet to really see. I mean, I still don't know anyone who's actually had this virus and has had some sort of like negative effect from it. Um, I've known some people that have said, yeah, I had a, a, a flu type thing, had a head cold like I do once a year. Okay. But 
the the point I'm bringing up is how come every single news channel, every person right now is so focused on, you know, basically go along with this agenda. But we've seen for years that there's enough food in the world. We can solve the crisis of hunger. Where's all the news articles on that? Where's the united front on, instead of a world death clock on CNN and Fox News, why isn't there like a world fed clock or, or world fed count? Like how many people we feed? How many people now have quality nutrition? Have you ever wondered that? Right? Why is there no talk about building your immune system, only discussion about getting the jab? It just doesn't add up. And I know a lot of people that just have this view and understanding backed by science that is not being talked about in the mainstream at all. It's not even a debate in the mainstream. It's just one view. And if you don't have it, you're, you know, whatever. You know how labels get thrown around. So I'm saying this because we need people to band together instead of come apart. We need to be able to have logical, coherent conversations, not just fear and reaction. Um, the age-old um, plan of divide and conquer, which has been used by the elite forever. Um, kings, queens throughout the ages, different governments, dictatorships. It's basically keep the people down so they never rise up. Um, and I'm not saying rise up like a revolution. Revolution is stupid. What I'm saying is evolution through education and building community of equals so that we can all get to our highest level possible. It's called equality of opportunity, not equality of outcome. So that's why we should build local community because if we don't act now, we're gonna hit a point where this next generation grows up and these are people that are literally afraid to hug anyone, think you have to wear a mask all the time and just totally possessed, not even willing to look at an alternative view and if we don't step up and act now, those generations in the future are gonna be really far gone. And so that's why every day I work on building local community here in Minnesota, Minneapolis. And it's is the most important thing out there is to have people that are like-minded and not everyone needs to agree on everything, but where there's basic principles we agree to, like let's find solutions and let's act in ways that's best for everyone not just good for a few and screws over others and if you're smart enough you can figure those out it's just called common sense and with that we learn how to navigate reality together so now i'm in business with a lot of these local people right we're adding value to each other's lives um, we're helping people be able to quit their jobs and not have to return so they have their own business they have their own key to really getting wealthy and um there's a really good book called uh, The Coming Age of Neo-Feudalism. And if you don't know what feudalism is, get educated. <laughs> um, feudalism was back, way back in the day, hundreds of years ago, how there were kings and queens. And they would basically have different classes. So there's the ruling elite, and then there's um, basically the, the peasants, the servants. And there was a clear divide, and you couldn't jump from one to the other. It was extremely rare. So that's what's happening again. Where basically, if you're part of the elite, super wealthy, I'm talking about the people who are on Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft, you know, big tech. Um, if you're not part of that or in that class of people, where everything's headed in the future is, and it's basically here. I mean, I don't know if y'all seen um, Elon Musk and the Tesla bots. That's coming for everybody's job. Anyone who does manual labor, if you're into welding or construction or whatever, it's coming for your job. It might be in two years, it might be in 10 years, but I don't know about you, I'm here to live for the next 100 plus years. So, and that's gonna be possible too with technology. So, so much awesome opportunity. I'm not saying like these Tesla bots are bad, but, um, or watch Boston Dynamics, their newest update, it is insane. Is in, it's like something out of freaking Star Wars, but it's real. And I show it to people and they're like, this has to be computer generated. This is not real. I'm like, 
dude, do you understand how much money Boston Dynamics has? And that's just what's available in the public. Like, <laughs> I've heard from different people that stuff that's available to the public, the US military is 10 to 15 years ahead of it. So if that's available to the public, imagine what's behind the scenes. You know, we don't know. I mean, I've never worked for the military or the, the, the government or the CIA or Pentagon or anything like that, but you can just see where everything's headed. It's, there's kind of two roads. There is two roads. One is where we just kind of accept that, eh, I'd rather just stay home and stay safe, not really rise up too much. Look at the dogs. Teddy's now got a playmate. See, that's a local community. <laughs> so there's one, one future reality where um, we just like stay home, stay safe, totally go with the agenda, don't question anything, attack people who question anything, label them, call them names, like, and then we stay home and we stay safe, but we stay um, like a baby who never leaves the home or a bird who never leaves the nest. It's like you become weak, you become docile, and you become irrelevant. And then while well, a few people who understand how things are going on, like Bill Gates, who's buying up all the farmland, just look it up. It's in plain sight. He's actively trying to do this impossible burgers and all this stuff about his solutions to the climate crisis, which I'm not saying there's no crisis and we're absolutely polluting the earth. Oh, dang, Teddy, calm down, buddy. <laughs> he just flailed himself into my chair. <laughs> um, but are, are, you let, are you inferior to Bill Gates or are you equal to Bill Gates? Like, do you see him as some elite that's better than you or he has more answers than you or something like that? Because if you do, that's the problem. We all need to become equal in effectiveness to Bill Gates. It doesn't mean have the same starting point as him. So if you watch his documentary on Netflix, you'll hear his answer to why he does what he does. He, he calls it optimization. But that could mean a lot of different things. That could mean actually helping the planet to optimize. Or like most of these people at the top, they don't believe humans can actually change. So it's much more of like a managing people dynamic going on. Um, so that's one future where we basically accept that most people are slaves and a few people run everything and, but hey, life's pretty good. I got my Netflix, but you ever see the movie WALL-E, that Disney movie WALL-E, <laughs> where everyone's like a fat blob and they're sitting in a hovered chair. It's like a wheelchair thing. It's like, that's where things are headed. Even to the point where I've heard from other people that um, like food will be a luxury. And this is not just like random people. This is people who are very affluent, um, working on building sustainable solutions in their communities. Like one of the guys lives in um, Jefferson, Texas, and I know him through a mutual friend. And um, he's talking about how in the future, food will be a luxury. So he's planning ahead with his community to have a farm that um, anyone in the city can come and get their food from. And Jess and I are looking at similar solutions, right? Building local community. Because I don't know about you, but I am definitely not interested at all in eating 3D printed food. Maybe I'd try it just to say I tried it and like see what it tastes like. But there's a big difference between a apple that is grown from a tree in soil that has not been fertilized or not has been, uh, like chemically fertilized artificially there's natural fertilizer which you obviously need um the big difference between that apple and a 3d printed apple or a 3d printed pizza versus a real pizza made out of real dough with you know those ingredients so um that's one future and then there's another future where everyone gets a lot smarter and um, lives by principle and we all become equal in effectiveness to bill gates or even beyond bill gates because bill gates had a messed up childhood I'm just using Bill Gates because he's an example that he's kind of in the spotlight right now. Let me see where these dogs are. Come here. The new dog lady's really good at listening. And then she's training Teddy. Hey. Come here. <laughs> Look at her chase Teddy. So 
hilarious. Oh. Which one's gonna chase the other one? <laughs> you can tell she's a lot smaller than Teddy, so Teddy kind of dominates her, but then she'll keep going and she, it's fun to watch him play. So anyway, there, um, I, I just use Bill Gates because he's an example of uh, someone who's effective in the sense that he's made billions of dollars, he's runs businesses, he has the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation or whatever they call that now because he's divorced. Um, and he's an example, Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos or these people who have made a big impact in the world. Um, let's all be as impactful as that, but let's all come together and have principles behind what we do so that we don't create unintended consequences and we can actually treat our neighbors as ourselves. Because is Jeff Bezos treating his neighbor as he would like to be treated? The guy who runs modern day sweatshops and his Amazon factories, working his people so hard that they have to pee in water bottles and run all the time just so they can meet their quota. Just so in two years he can replace them all with robots. That's not treating your neighbor as you'd like to be treated. But he doesn't know, he's ignorant. He isn't aware about TechnoTutor yet because TechnoTutor is the key to bringing everyone to the same level as Jeff Bezos because guess what? Jeff Bezos just has a really extensive vocabulary, meaning he understands everything about business and international business expansion and the law and accounting and team building and leadership development. That's all vocabulary. That's all a bunch of words and concepts that he knows and he lives it. Hence, he created one of the biggest companies of all time. And so that's that's what we're here to do with TechnoTutor. In the same way how Bezos disrupted the whole retail industry and now what he's doing with computing and dude, Amazon Web Services, it's so insane what he's built. Like their most profitable, I, I don't know if it's technically it's their most profitable, but I know a huge, huge part of their business is their web services and different parts of our government is running on Amazon Web Services. So the dude's effective, he knows stuff. Um, but we're here with TechnoTutor, with Self Perfected, to bring an even bigger level of disruption to the world by ensuring that every child is able to get to that same level of understanding. Not that everyone has to, we can't force it on anyone, we're not gonna, forcing is stupid. But we're gonna sell everyone on how their life's gonna be way better when they understand how the world works and when they let go of their emotional reactions so we can actually become effective humans. So that is only done through building local community as well as online community, but local community is such an important piece because back to the beginning, just look at what's happening in Australia right now. And in Canada, communist Canada, it's insane. It's like you have to um, report, it's like school. Yeah, got to report, otherwise the authorities are going to come after you. And so um, let's not let that happen in America. Let's also be wise, right? If you're um, unhealthy, let's look at that. Let's support that. Like, let's support people to develop overall so that we don't have to be afraid of some virus. Rather, we can just live and apply the principle of prevention. So thinking ahead, not creating consequences. Um, but then let's also get to the real issues in the world, such as the lack of education, the lack of food, um, lack of basic health care, basic understanding of reality. So that's what we're here to do um, before it's too late, because imagine trying to build local community right now in Australia. It ain't going to happen. Your neighbors are going to snitch on you, just like in Nazi Germany. So um, let's act. All right, we don't have time to waste.